So, you want to grow a bigger chest. Don't we all? So, the last six years that I've been training, my chest has been easily the most dominant part of my entire physique. Now, yes, a big part of that is related to genetics, but I have been very smart when it comes to training my chest. And along with when you have good genetics and you have good training, the next thing you're gonna get is a lot of growth. So I'm gonna go through and give you guys my biggest tips when it comes to building a bigger chest. I've talked about this many times in my YouTube videos before, but this one I'm gonna make sure I hit you guys with different types of advice as well as some newer stuff that I've learned more recently that is helping me build a bigger chest still. Um, just to show you guys an example of what my chest used to look like back when I first started. Yeah, I was pretty skinny back then, but there was still a little bit of, you could see that there was potential there in um, the shape of my chest. And then here it is now. Um, yes, I am, I am natural. I'm 22 years old now. I've been training for about six years. Um, and it's definitely the most dominant part of my physique. Usually when you go up and ask somebody, or at least like you ever see like those videos where you go up to like a girl and you ask her like what the most aesthetic body part is. Um, majority of the time, a girl is going to say the chest or the back. Um, so I think the chest is one of the most crucial parts when it comes to building an aesthetic physique. Um, just as you see, usually when you see somebody and you're judging their physique, you're seeing them from the front. If they have a really big, big and wide chest, good delts, um, that's pretty much all you need to really have a good flowing physique because it really accentuates that V taper physique. So, so I'm going to walk you guys through exactly how I do my workouts or how I've done my workouts over time. Now, just to let you guys know before, uh, for my first year of training, all I did was, um, calisthenics. So I did push ups. I would do 400 to 500 push up uh, workouts, um, for my chest focus calisthenic days. So that's how I built my physique was with, uh, was with uh, not built my physique, but that's how I started my, my growth um, in my chest, which probably, I'll pop up pictures went from here to here, was mainly off of push-ups and dips. That's literally all I did for chest um, for like the first year of lifting. And then I started hitting the weights for the first time. Now, one of the things I'm gonna say, when I go to do a chest workout or a push workout, or whatever it may be, I always start off by warming up my chest with an, with, with an isolation movement. So I don't go straight into my bench press. I don't go straight into like a really, really heavy movement. I always try to pre-exhaust. I talk about this in a lot of videos. And this is, I, even you guys tell me how this, after I've told you guys about this, this has made a big difference in your workouts, is pre-exhausting. So what that means is basically finding a pec deck, dumbbell flies, any type of for chest, it's usually a fly movement that is gonna allow you to really feel your chest get recruited in the entire movement. And it's gonna be, around, I don't know, maybe two, three sets of 15 to 20 reps, not going to failure, not really exerting yourself at all, just really focusing on getting a stretch contraction and getting blood flow going into your pecs. Now, after you do that pre-exhaustion, that those few sets, you're gonna to wanna to pick a movement where you're able to have the most amount of mechanical tension, which is the primary driver when it comes to hypertrophy. So that basically what that means is you wanna find an exercise where you're gonna be able to recruit the most amount of muscle fibers, and that is gonna be by putting on the most amount of weight. So for a lot of people, that's going to be a dumbbell bench press or a barbell bench press now for me i always like to prioritize incline movements just because a lot of people tend to have a lacking upper chest um so that's really big to make sure you you focus a lot of incline movements especially in the beginning part of your workout because the the beginning part of your workout is the most crucial because that's when you're able to have the most amount of um exertion on your muscle fibers so that's why it's good to pick a heavy movement at first because you're able to make sure that you maximize the amount of tension that you're putting out when you're fresh in the gym so I recommend doing like an incline dumbbell press to start off or an incline barbell press. You can always switch it up and do flat just to see where you're at, but I always think incline movements are gonna be superior to flat when it comes to building a chest. Um, so yeah, so for my first movement, I'll usually pick a, like, let's say we're doing dumbbell bar, uh, or dumbbell incline bench press. Um, usually I will do four sets to failure, um, hitting around the six to the eight rep range for that heavy movement. Uh, and that any, any, any of that looks like I'll do, I don't know, I'll, I'll start with a warm up set of like 60 pounds um, and not go to failure on that. I won't count that as a working set. And then after that, I'll do four working sets of a weight that I feel like I can get six to eight reps with. If I get more, that's good. Next week, I'll go up in weight. Just make sure you're tracking it so you can really watch your uh, progressive overload. After that, I'll usually find a movement where I believe I have the best my muscle connection with. Usually for me, that's gonna be a plate loaded press. Um, so I usually would like to go to a flat rate decline, like hammer strength plate loaded press. And I'll usually, I can usually still, I'm still pretty fresh, so I can put on the most amount of weight. But for this, the second movement, what I like to do is I like to find a weight that I feel like I can put on like a lot of size with. So I'm picking a weight that's still kind of heavy, but I want to make sure I can hit at least 10 to 12 reps on it because I know I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on the time under tension. So when I go into this next exercise, I never just push the weight back and forth. I really make sure I focus a lot on the 
um, contraction of it as well as the eccentric and a big tip which I've learned more recently which I really want to let you guys know is a lot of people teach you when you're when you're um when you're hitting chest or when you're bench pressing to keep your shoulders locked back and down and that's how you're supposed to press that's good I feel like when you're going for like your PR and your bench press because it gives you one less muscle to focus about um, or to think about but the the biggest tip I've learned recently with getting a really crazy contraction in my chest and just for overall scapula and shoulder health is allowing your scapula which let's say we're in a in a um a decline chest press machine right so i'm like here is really let your traps come back i'll almost contract my my back like i'm doing a row almost i'll really let my scapula come back and when i go to push the weight forward i will push with my scapula so what that means is i will push my lats almost out and i'll get the craziest contraction so instead of keeping my shoulders back and down i'm just bang, banging out the reps right i pull and i row with my upper back and then i push with my lats and my scapula and then I get the craziest contraction. Also the biggest tip too to get a better contraction when you're doing like hammer strength stuff is you have to imagine your elbows coming together. That's how I imagine, that's how you activate your chest. It's think of your elbows and you wanna bring them together. So I'm trying to get them to get as close as each other as possible. That's what you have to think of when you're moving the weight. What are we talking about? So the second exercise, yeah, really at learning how to use your scapula has been crucial to me. I always thought that like I had to keep everything back and down and locked into place. But uh, as I've been, I went to basically what I found this out. I was going to a guy to get uh, PT on my torn on my torn labrum, and I was getting dry needling and stuff. And he was saying how like your scapula is supposed to move with you. Like when you're doing shoulder movements and everything, you move it down and you bring it with you the whole way through. So I'm trying to like almost activate my back when I'm doing my pressing movements, and it's making a world of difference. And I feel the contraction like so much more. I don't know if you're just I mean you're sitting down probably while you're watching this. If you hold one pec. Try keeping your shoulder back and down and move it forward like this. You really don't feel that much of like a pec contraction. Now, imagine rowing it back, right? And then pushing it forward with your lat. I guarantee you'll feel so much more of a contraction. So try to do that and mimic that when you're doing like plate loaded presses. Um, it's harder to do that when you're doing like your bar your barbell or your, or your dumbbell because I always say it's, it's good to push the most amount of weight. So you it, that's just one less thing to worry about. If you, you don't have to worry about your scapula moving back and forth. So when you're put, like, doing your heavy sets, just push the most amount of weight you can. All right, so we talked about using your scapula, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, so that that second movement after the the main compound lift, I like to pick a movement where I can feel the most amount of like tension. Uh, really focus on time under tension. So slow eccentric, really focusing on the contraction, not and you drop the weight. You all gotta learn to drop the weight. Too many people I see in the gym, they're wondering why they're not growing a bigger chest. It's like, it's just the ego lifting, right? You load too much weight on the, on like the, the Smith, or not the Smith, the, like the plate loaded presses and you're getting maybe like five, six good reps. And it's like using all lockout, like tricep. You gotta really dial it in, really focus on bringing your chest back and together really trying to activate your pec like i said like bring your elbows together through the entire movement keep your shoulders um like down into place on a smooth level and really just get that that fluid motion and focus on your chest contracting if you need if you have like a lifting partner have them tap on it really try to get that mind muscle connection because you already got that main lift out of the way so now after that i think it's all good to really focus on having a good balance between weight and uh mind muscle connection the last movement usually in the chest workout i'll pick a isolation movement such as a cable fly where i can really focus on again stretching my scapula and contracting and bringing my elbows as close as i can together usually that movement for me is a cable fly um, or a pec deck works uh, as well very well. I'll do three to four sets of that usually around 12 to 15 reps mainly as a burnout um, Another big thing that you guys need to do when it comes to Oh yummy self see it Other tips that I have for you guys when it comes to building a bigger chest is again focusing on different intensity techniques A lot of people when I see them go to the gym Especially beginners are all on that like 3 by 12 like mindset like everything's gotta be 3 by 12 3 by 12 or 4 by 12 and there's no aspect of intensity that is brought into it. It's like they hit 12 reps and they're like, okay, I'm done when they could have hit 15 or they like are going to try to hit 12 and they hit 10 and then they lighten the weight. So one of the things you guys don't need to understand is intensity is so key when it comes to building muscle tissue, especially if you've been training natural for a while, you need to have an, a bigger driver that's going to make you get bigger. You can't just do three at first three by 12, whatever is going to make you grow hundred percent. But if you really want to hit that next stage, if you've been lifting for like a few years, you got to bump up the intensity. And how do you do that? Through forced reps, through having like a partner to help you do forced reps at the end of your set, doing partial reps. So usually for me, like this is what a, a normal working set will look like. I bench, whatever it is, press movement, so failure. Then I will do, um, I'll have a partner help me get forced reps, do like another, bang out another three or four forced reps. And then I will do partials and have my partner help me get out a few more partials and then sometimes I'll even hold it on that on that stretch portion for like one to two seconds at the end of the set and then that is a working set. Instead of doing 
12 reps done you do your 12 reps or whatever it is in your rep range you're trying to hit to failure have a partner help you get a few more reps to failure do some partial reps have a partner help you do more partial reps to failure hold it on that stretch portion to failure and then that is a legitimate intense working set and that is one of is that that's what's going to stimulate growth not this three by 12 bullshit some of y'all be doing just because it's in a workout program just because a program workout programs are dope because they allow you to give you like an idea so you stay on like you're, you're more organized on track but if a workout program says like three sets again of 10 to 12 reps like that's just like an idea where you should go i don't count my reps when i train i put as much weight as i can on the bar that i know i can at least get like eight or something reps with and then anything past eight it's just it's just bonus points at that point so and you're going going to failure bro it's so key um now you can't as a natural go to failure on every single single set for so for me what i like to do is when i um, i'll do usually the last two sets um of of any like primary movement i will usually do that intense intense set and then if it's more of an isolation movement like a fly i'll usually do a drop set on the last set and i'll lower the weight that's also a way to add more intensity just because you're getting more out of the set than just that typical three by 12 or whatever it may be. Now, I also don't want to overlook the more, not more minor things, just the tips that you should know, but a lot of people still overlook. Your water intake is going to be crucial. Again, I'm trying to even get better th with this myself because I drink so many like energy drinks and stuff, but trying to get a gallon a day is going to be key and crucial. The more water, your muscles are made up a majority of water. So you have water, you're drinking water, you're going to be stronger in your lifts. The more stronger you are in the lifts, the more intensity you can train, the more you're going to be stimulating more muscle fibers, therefore you're going to get bigger. So drinking your water, um, also taking the right supplements that can help you. So creatine is, yes, going to help you get stronger and is a fine supplement to take. I, I, I'm not gonna say you have to take it, but it's probably one of the most backed by research ones. Offline actually has a really good one if you guys wanna check it out. It tastes amazing, code Alex if you guys wanna check it out. Um, third thing um, is gonna be, or next thing is gonna be sleep. A lot of you guys, when you guys are in school, probably getting five, six hours of sleep a night, that is not good. You're not gonna be tr uh, recovered enough, especially as a natural, to be able to train and output the most amount you can on your next day. So I recommend at least seven hours. And if you can't get seven hours in one night, take naps take naps throughout the day bro before your workout so you're a little bit more rested up so you can perform um your best and then the next thing is going to be your food intake don't expect to get a bigger chest or to get a bigger body body part anywhere if that for that reason if you're not in a surplus or at a main gaining phase where you're, where you're eating around maintenance or a little bit more um you're not going to get bigger if you're eating in a deficit and you're trying to get bigger that is not going to happen unless you're on a stupid amount of gear or whatever it is so if you if you want to Go, grow you got to gain a little bit of fat or you can try main gaining i do believe main gaining works i've been main gaining for like the last two and a half years and i maybe am a little bit bigger um but as long as you provide that stimulus you get a high amount of protein it's going to be you're going you're to be able you're going to be fine you're going to be building a little bit of muscle tissue over time um again this stuff doesn't happen overnight you got to implement these techniques and tactics um consistently and consistency is going to be what builds your titties it's trying to rhyme all right that's it. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, but I, I am notorious for this is how I like started my YouTube channel. I, I enjoy doing more of these informational based stuff. Um, so you guys can maybe learn from it and implement it in your own training stuff. Again, I have programs, all that good stuff linked down below in the description. Currently I'm working on my own workout app, like my legitimate, like I paid for a program, all that stuff. So that'll be hopefully dropping in spring. Um, but I do have programs on the Elysium site. Uh, raw gear drop is today, by the way, I'll probably have a try on haul at the end of this video. Possibly we'll see. I'm wearing the acid wash looking like vintage hoodie right now and i have the matching joggers on um so you guys want to check that out that'll be live at 3 p.m eastern today which probably by the time this video is up you guys can go check it out link in the description probably have the pinned comment um code alex again for a discount alpha line code alex celsius flex pro all that good stuff love you guys i will see you guys wednesday Bye -bye.